Christ, Christ is, is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the, Lord, the only begotten Son, Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, Lord God, Lamb, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery hast established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my God, and my good above all other. All my delight upon the godly that are in the land, and upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When it was evening of the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked it for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. And do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which were not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There is the closest possible association between the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins. Uh, The scripture tells us that the disciples are hiding. They're afraid. They have a lot of reasons to be afraid. They certainly may be afraid of the authorities who could be uh, depended upon to uh, want to do to the followers what they had done to the leaders. They certainly would be afraid of the mob. But there's also this fear, the fear that comes out of guilt, the anxiety that comes out of, out of, out of guilt. Uh, they had all deserted him when he needed them most. They had all run away, only the women and St. John stood by the foot of the cross. There's a wonderful film, uh, which we'll try to send out uh, a link to it so that you can find it. Uh, it, You can get it on YouTube. It's by the Disney actor, Dean Jones. Some of us are old enough to remember Dean Jones. He was a comedic actor. He did a lot of comedies for the Disney uh, company. But he was also a serious Christian and actually a very uh, accomplished and classically trained actor with a tremendous range. And uh, it was his life's ambition to write and perform a one-man play about the Gospel of John. And uh, you can see this play on YouTube. It's, it's called St. John in Exile. John's an old man. He's on the Roman prison island of Patmos. Uh, now, you, uh, you typically don't come back from Patmos. And he's reminiscing about his time with the Lord. And there comes a part where he's remembering the night in which Jesus is betrayed when Judas comes at the head of the mob with the torches and clubs and with the soldiers from the synagogue, and when he is given into the hands of sinful men and taken away to be tried and executed. And the character of John in this play is talking about that night 
and he begins to moan and cry. And he begins to quote from Lamentations and from the Hebrew Psalms of Lamentations. And then he, uh, he puts his prayer shawl over his head and he says, he says, he says this, he says, he says, Judas didn't know what he was doing, but we all knew. Well, they might be frightened. Well, they might be paralyzed with anxiety. And then there he is in the middle of them. And he is the mercy of God and the forgiveness of God and the sacrificial love of God and the judgment of God upon the wickedness of men and upon our rejection and abandonment of God. And he is also God's mercy, forgiveness, and the embrace of us in sacrificial love in spite of all of that. He's all of those things in person. He's standing them. He shows them his hands and his side. He shows them the marks of the human rejection of God. He shows them the marks of their abandonment of him and of our abandonment of him. And he shows them also his mercy, forgiveness. And then he breathes into them. He says, shalom, and he breathes into them. Now, shalom is peace, we translate it, but the word is shalom, and it's a big word in the Bible. Shalom means not just uh, the peace of this world, it means the peace of a world that is coming. When men are perfectly reconciled to God and we are perfectly reconciled to each other, when sins are forgiven and when all the barriers of hatred are overcome and when evil and wickedness is absolutely obliterated and taken away. Uh, neither will they study war anymore then. And in that kingdom, the lion and the lamb will lie down together. Even nature will be reconciled. Now it's that peace that he breathes into them. One of the things that St. John does is he teaches us who Jesus is by taking us back to the book of Genesis. And he teaches us to read Genesis by taking, taking us with Jesus back to the book of Genesis. You re may remember that when God creates the human beings, when God creates humankind, he creates humanity out of the earth and then he breathes his, his life-giving breath into Adam. Now here's the son, of, the son of God, the crucified and risen one, and he's breathing his the recreating shalom of a kingdom that is coming into these frightened men and making them new, giving them forgiveness and mercy, infusing them with sacrificial love and taking people who are dead in their fear and sin and guilt and giving them a new, new life. St. Paul says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, the old has passed away and the new has come. Now Thomas is not there, and he doesn't believe. Uh, he has the same problem that we have. He has the problem of trusting the original witnesses, and he has the same problem of what to make of the change that's come over them. Uh, we sometimes think that if we lived in the time of Jesus, it would be easier for us to believe. It was hard for them, a challenge for them, and it's a challenge for us. The biggest impediment in our time is a prejudice. It's the prejudice that God, that God could not possibly have acted in this way. Uh, sometimes this is posed as a, a tension between science and faith, but it is absolutely unscientific to decide what might happen before you investigate the case. The resurrection of the Lord is the most plausible historical explanation for the change that came over these men. It's the most plausible historical ex explanation for the creation of the early church. Uh, it is the most plausible historical explanation for the complete transformation that came over these early disciples of the Lord 
and for the vigor and zeal with which they took the message of sacrificial love to a, a waiting world. Um, it falls to us who have been touched by this mercy, by this forgiveness, and by the recreating breath of God that comes to us through the crucified and risen one. It comes to us who have found the forgiveness of sin and a new life with each other and with God that begins now, and the grave cannot hold it. It comes to us to say to the world now, we have seen the Lord. We have seen the Lord. And to echo the words of Job, I know that my Redeemer liveth. And so he sends us out to be witnesses to the resurrection and to be remade and recreated by the power of the Holy Spirit that he, we might live with him forever. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very, very God, God of very God, God begotten, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation, salvation came down from heaven, heaven and became was made incarnate by the Holy Ghost, Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was, was made man, and was, man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the, with Father, the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by, by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic, Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look, I look for the, the resurrection, resurrection of the dead and the life, the life of the world, world to come. come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially to Michael, our presiding bishop, and to William, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of every of government in this and every land, especially our president and the governor of this state and the mayor of this city, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor especially, Lord, those who are stricken with this disease. All those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good example of all the saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins against Almighty God. 
Almighty God, Father, Father of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all you that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying, worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Peace, 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 peace. Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet and right in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again hath won for us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 holy. Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven and, and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be, be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute. And in his Holy Gospel commands us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial that thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. We earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we, and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion, may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, 
All honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table. Trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we, we most heartily thank Thee that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby Thy favor and goodness towards us, that we, your very members and corporate and mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you.